Hi everyone, in this video we will be discussing the problem longest repeating and non overlapping substring. So let us read the problem statement and see what we have to do in this particular problem. So the problem says that we will be given a string of length n. So the number of characters that will be given in the string is n. Now we have to find the length of the longest repeating and non overlapping substring in it. In other words, we have to find two identical substrings which are of maximum length and they do not overlap. We have to return minus one if no such answer exists. If multiple answer exists, then we have to return according to the first occurrence. Okay. For example, in the string a b h i, uh, if we'll write the sample string as a b h i, and then we have uh, got uh, again h i a b, right? So we have got h i and then a b. Suppose is this is the given string. So in this string, you can see that a b. Uh, first thing is that a b is there. That is repeating. Uh, because AB is repeating here and here and this is not overlapping, right? And you can also say that HI is also present and HI is also present. So HI is present two times and it is also non-overlapping. So the answer could have been AB as well as HI because the length of both are same. But since AB is occurring before, so that is why AB is considered in the final answer. But we will have to return AB because it is the first occurrence. So if two strings are longest repeating and non-overlapping, so you have to consider the one which is occurring before in terms of index okay now in this particular problem if you will see furthermore so suppose that we have been given a c d so let's write this test case we have been given a c d then we have been given c d a so we have been given let's say a c d and then we have been given c d a and then after this what we have been given is we have been given c d c so suppose that c d c is also given so this if this string is given to us then in this particular case uh, you can see here that uh, if I will check the string ACD and ACD, so it is non overlapping. Uh, if you will see, let's check this. I think the answer is ACD. Yes. So, yes, you can see here that in this case, uh, the string ACD that is there, you can see it is uh, longest and it is non repeating here. Okay. So, the answer comes out to be ACD. Okay. And uh, ACD is the longest and it is non repeating. Now, after this, if you will see HEH and then EHEH. So in this string, HEH is the longest uh, uh, repeating and uh, non-overlapping string that is there. Okay, so how can we solve this particular problem? So there can be two approaches for solving this problem. First of all, we can have a brute force approach. Okay, firstly, we can have a brute force approach. Now what you can do in the brute force approach, like in the brute force approach, you can solve the problem easily by generating what? By uh, considering all possible substrings, right? You can take all possible substrings. If you will uh, take all possible substrings, suppose, and uh, then after that, you will check for the uh, non overlapping. So, first, like what you can consider is you can consider that you will try to generate all possible substring, and then amongst those, you will see which are non overlapping in nature, and then you will get your answer. So, if you will do it like that, then in order to generate all possible substrings, you will have n square time. And then uh, because you will have I loop and J loop and then after that for checking the non overlapping part, you will run another loop. So because of that, your complexity would be order of N cube. So if you are going to apply the brute force way, then generating all possible substring and then checking whether they are overlapping or not uh, and uh, repeating and non overlapping. So then this will take a lot of time and overall it will be N cube in nature. But if we want to simplify our process, then what we can do is we can apply the concept of dynamic programming here. How we can apply the concept of dynamic programming here because in this particular case if you have to uh, apply a dynamic programming approach so what is the basic uh, level uh, thought or what is the intuition behind that approach the intuition will be that we will try to find the longest repeating suffix okay for all the prefix okay for all the prefix in the string right so for all the prefixes that we have in the string uh, we have to try and find the longest uh, repeating substring if we do that then our answer would be possible so if you will uh, see here what we can basically do is let's say we can declare a dp array let's say dp of ij now in this particular dp of ij suppose if i'm uh, if i'm having dp of ij so it will store what it, dp of ij will store the length okay it can uh, like i will try to store what in this dp of ij so I'll try to store the length of the repeating or matching uh, non overlapping substring that is there non overlapping substring which is ending with i and j8 character. So once I have it suppose that if uh, in the, inside the string the i minus 1 th is same as the j minus 1 th and at the same time what happens the length that is j minus i 
uh, if it is greater than the dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 if it is greater then in that case what i can update is i can say that my dp of ij will become nothing but what this is a rec uh, recurrence or recursive relation that we can write so it will be nothing but equal to dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 uh, plus 1 why because the length would increase by 1 otherwise i will say that if this is not possible then uh, i'll mark the dp of ij as basically 0 right and uh, basically i will be changing from where to where so i will be changing from 1 to n because uh, in this case you can understand that uh, since dp of ij is storing what it is storing the length of the longest matching uh, non overlapping substring which is ending at the ith and the jth character so basically my i loop will start from 1 to n and my j loop is going to run from where it is going to always run from i plus 1th index till the n so that uh, i can consider the uh, non overlapping part uh, okay now in this case uh, what we need to do is uh, we can write this code so firstly we need to declare a dp array uh, so what i will do here is let me just quickly zoom in so that we can start writing our implementation so what we will uh, basically do here is we will first of all declare a 2d array so let's say we will declare a dp array of n plus 1 n plus 1 size because we will be taking one base indexing here then after this what we will do here is uh, i'll first of all mark my uh, dp array uh, with the value as minus one indicating that initially it will not be calculated or i can mark it as zero right because initially the length would be zero so i'll take uh, mem set dp comma zero comma size of dp right so basically this will help me to initialize my 2d dp array with uh, all the values as zero now once i have done this so what i will do is i'll declare my string result now in this resultant string i'm going to store the mark uh, like i'm going to store the final string and i also need the resultant length okay and initially i'll mark this length as zero because initially i'll assume that there is no uh, string okay then after this what you can do is you can start your like you can we can declare our i variable and our index variable so let's say index variable will also be there after this what we can do is we can simply say that we can start our i loop uh, since i have declared it already so i think we can use it from there so we can start our i from one i is less than equal to the n value then we can do i plus plus here then after this what we will do is like we will uh, start running our j loop as well and for running our j loop we can start it from i plus one right and then uh, j is less than equal to n and then we will do a j plus plus here now when i am running this loop so what i will uh, check is as i said because the string is zero base index so i have to check for s of i minus one so if s of i minus one uh, suppose if it is equal to s of j minus one so if both of them are same and at the same time what happens is the j minus i value if it is greater than the dp of i minus one j minus one so this the, uh, this basically tells us that in this case we have to mark our dp of ij with what value so we have to update our dp of ij with uh, nothing but dp of i minus 1 uh, j minus 1 plus 1 okay so i'll update it with this value and also at the same time like firstly i'll update it with this particular value and once i have updated so i also need to check that if the dp of ij that i have calculated right now if it is greater than my maximum resultant length so if it is greater than my maximum resultant length then what i will do here is then i will say that uh, i'll update my resultant length with this particular value that is dp of ij okay and then what i will do here is i'll mark my result with the with this particular string so my resultant string will be nothing but uh, like uh, i can update it but uh, since i want to take it only one time so i'll not be using the substring function here so i will do what i'll update my index with the maximum value of uh, i comma the index okay now this would help me to extract the string finally okay now once this is done then in the else case like uh, what i need to write is i need to update my dp of ij with the value as zero otherwise okay if it is not possible uh, then after running this loop what we need to do is we need to check that if the resultant length suppose if the resultant uh, length is uh, greater than zero okay if the resultant length is greater than zero then what i need to do is i need to run a loop from this particular index minus the resultant length plus one because that will be the index uh, from where my string would be starting and then i is less than equal to index because uh, this is the index that we have stored already now uh, i need to do i plus plus also and what we will do here is after this uh, like inside our string we can keep on adding so we can say 
that uh, result plus is equal to s of i minus 1 so we can keep keep on adding the string and then after this part is done so suppose that if the result comes out to be empty so if the resultant string is not made uh, right if it is still empty so initially let's say i'll mark it as empty if the resultant string is still empty then what i can do here is i can simply return the string as minus one indicating that the answer does not exist else what i will do here is else i'll update uh, my answer with a string okay so this is what i'm doing here let me try and compile this code to check if it is working fine or not okay so there's there are a couple of issues uh yeah so i should write j start from i am i plus one So it says that there is another error in the line number 73 which is actually not there so line number 28 let's check okay it says that dp of ij is greater than this thing so i might have made some mistake here So we're using a colon here colon here then let's check if we are closing the bracket properly yes i've closed it here as well so we have got the string as s so uh, let me check what is the mistake here dp of ij is greater than this let's just try and submit and see if it is uh, working or not again okay so it is not working so i guess i might have made some mistake here let me just check so what i am doing here is firstly i am declaring a dp of n plus 1 n plus 1 size then i am marking my dp with the value as 0 then what i am doing is i am declaring the resultant string and i am also having the length as 0 then i have the index uh, i and index index will be at 0 then i am running a loop from 1 to n and i am running a j loop from i plus 1 till j is less than equal to n then i am doing a j plus plus if the i minus 1 th is equal to the j minus 1 th and at the same time what happens is that uh, j minus i if that value is greater than dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 then after this what i need to do is i need to mention that my dp of i j will get updated to what it will get updated to dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1 and if the dp of i j is greater than the resultant length okay so i have made a spelling mistake here that was the basic issue now let's try and run it again and see if it is working fine or not okay so still it gives me the same error in line number 28 or 40 okay so i need to check if the resultant length is greater than zero then what i'm doing is i'm marking my i as index minus one result and then i is less than equal to this then i'm doing this then result plus is equal to this okay and then so instead of this like uh, otherwise i have returned the result so let's do one thing let us just try and directly return this result so what i can do here is i can say that i'll do push back s of i minus 1 so we can directly push here let's check if this works So yes, you can see that uh, after fixing the issues in my code, the code was able to get accepted. I hope that you have clearly understood this problem guys. Thank you for watching this video.